Well, welcome back to Watford General Hospital. It's hard to talk about the challenge facing the NHS without talking about money. Here in Watford, the Trust will have a deficit of £14 million by the end of this financial year, rising considerably if nothing changes. And again, that's pretty typical across the NHS. NHS England has a budget of £100 billion for this financial year, but if nothing changes, it faces a shortfall of £30 billion by 2020. Efficiencies, it's hoped, will save £22 billion. But according to its boss, the NHS still needs another £8 billion to keep going. So what are the options? And are politicians telling us the truth about what's really needed? Should we all be paying to see our local doctor? Should we be penalised if we go to A&E unnecessarily? Private health insurance? More integration? More reform? Or is the answer to increase the number of NHS services provided by private sector providers? At the end of the last government, the NHS was spending about £11 million per day on private providers. That's now £18 million a day. But is it working? And as it's your NHS, what do you want? Well, Victoria Macdonald joins me again. Victoria, can you answer some of those questions for us? <laughs> Not entirely, but th there has been some very interesting polling on this. It came from the Health Foundation. They released the figures from the British Social Attitude Survey, and it does give you a feel for what voters are thinking at the moment. Now, should the NHS remain, remain free at the point of care? Well, you would not be surprised. Nine out of ten people say absolutely yes. But there is some interesting detail in this. 51% of the respondents thinks that the NHS is wasting money. And 58% said, and this is the first time this has come up in a long time, said that, uh, that they shouldn't spend money at the expense of other public services. They think other public services have, have borne the cuts, as it were. Now, on that privatisation or the private provider question, and this is very interesting as well, 43% did not have a preference about who provided that care, whether it was NHS or private or voluntary, just as long as it remained free. OK, well, we'll come on to the role of the private sector in a minute, but let's put some of those points uh, to the politicians here. Um, Andy Burnham, Shadow Health Secretary first. Uh, the poster that Labour's just put out saying, next time they'll cut to the bone, they being the Tories, Actually, the Tories have increased NHS funding in real terms. They've, they, that's what they said they'll do next Parliament, and that's what they've done this Parliament. That's pure scaremongering, isn't it? Not at all, because I'm talking about social care. I've warned about it consistently, and the budget last week uh, was described by the OBR as a roller coaster. What they mean is there'll be even deeper cuts to social care in the first two years of the next Parliament. Now, in my view, the cuts have already caused the A&E crisis. If we have these even deeper cuts, they'll entrench that crisis across the NHS. We're not spending money properly, Cathy, in the NHS. I'll take the point about waste. We're not spending a few pounds supporting older people properly in their own homes. We're doing these useless 15-minute visits, only to spend thousands of pounds keeping people unnecessarily in hospital beds, as we saw on your film at the start of this okay. discussion. Jeremy Hunt. Well, I don't agree with Andy on this. And, and you know, if he actually listened to what... Uh, was said in the budget last week, they said that if we stick to the plan by the end of the next parliament we will see the biggest increase in public spending across all services, you know, including social care, in a decade. But you get that if you stick to a plan and I think well, the biggest said, deep worry cuts now... cuts to local government spending yes. means that the NHS is having to shoulder more of the burden of social care mm -hmm. and will do increasingly. And I agree with Andy that there is a strong link between what happens in the social care and the NHS, but I think it's also important to say that Labour have said there isn't any extra money for local government. And I think the biggest risk to NHS funding now is if we tear up the plan. This is, in the end, the most important question we can debate this evening. The NHS needs £115 billion Your pounds yeah, every, work, every year. Now, let me just finish this point, Kathy, because you didn't let me <laughs> is finish Is this how it before. works in the Cabinet? We, have, we actually uh, have very good discussions, but it's £115 billion pounds a year. We have an economy that is now generating 1,000 jobs every single day. All those jobs are paying taxes, companies are paying taxes, and that means we can look to a future where with the ageing population we can actually put more money into the NHS. Let's let uh, Norman Lamin know. So want. the most exciting thing, Cathy, in the budget last week was £1.25 billion pounds to transform children and young people's mental health over the next five years. Uh, Nick Clegg negotiated and secured that and that will make a massive difference well, to people's lives. Why have you lives. cut it for five years, we, Norman? But we, we You've haven't. been cutting we, children's we mental haven't. health. Why? But, uh, but Cathy... Well, the I'll answer that point, though. We, we haven't. The, 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 problem in, the problem in the way the system works is that 
there is a complete imbalance of work. You've not let, let mental me, health in this parliament. Yeah, let, me, let me, let me, let me no, answer actually, the question. Actually, I can give you the facts on this. And I just say, I think no one has done more than Norman on mental health. And it's actually been a very good example of the mental coalition. Health and the mental cut. health budget, and, and, and the mental health cut. budget, Andy, has not been cut. Well, it can you just that, Andy, ben? In real terms. There and have we can been show you the real numbers. terms cuts to the mental no, health Kathy, budget if I can, if I can, if I could just... absolutely no doubt about it. Cathy, if I could just explain before Andy interrupts me. In the last parliament, under the Labour government, they introduced a whole load of waiting time staff. Standards, but they left out mental health and that dictates where the money goes so mental health will always lose out exactly. and I'm really so proud I'm really proud of the fact that we are introducing the first ever waiting time standards in mental health from this April and okay. it will make a massive difference but all parties okay. need to commit to that eight billion pounds gap Mark Hanson you commit to the eight billion uh, pounds we have we fri we're free at point of use fully funded by taxation Full, that's the first thing but secondly we need to cut out waste. You go into large hospitals and there's dozens and dozens of, <coughs> of managers. What do they do? Okay. What, use, what use are they? Okay, let me, let me bring in Kate Andrews at this point from the Adam Smith Institute. Are any of these promised extra billions, I mean it ranges from two billion to the full eight billion from the Lib Dems, are any of them going to do the trick for the NHS? Well, everyone's promising billions, and I still haven't heard exactly where they're coming from. But at the moment, everyone wants to be the party of the NHS because that's politically popular a couple months before an election. But back in January, the European um, Health Index for Consumers put the UK's health provisions at number 14, just within Europe. Not number one, number 14. And um, everybody who came before the UK had better patient outcomes. They had... Uh, lower waiting times, shorter waiting times, and most importantly, in my opinion, they drew a distinction. They knew that government should be there to make sure that there was funding for health care for everybody, from the people who need it most to the people at the top. But they also knew, for the most part, that government was not the most efficient body to provide those services. Yeah. Well, and this is what I want to put to the panel. If it is the case, if it is the case that the UK citizens can right. get better health care if it's provided by someone else, why aren't I we see, talking about it? I reject that it? entirely. I mean, you're running a free market analysis there. The UK, the NHS, is the only healthcare system in the G7 that provides comprehensive healthcare to everybody of a decent standard for less than 10, wait a second, for less than 10% of our GDP. If you look at the US, they spend double that. They We're spend not talking about the US. 19% of their GDP on their health system. We can't hide behind my The accent. NHS We're going to talk has gone about backwards Europe. in recent years, but it is still, in no, my no, view, no. the well, best health well, service satisf in the world. Satisfaction in the NHS okay. went up by 5% last year. Commonwealth Fund identified it as the best system globally last year. But it doesn't okay, let, let, let me just let you me just to put to Andy Burnham. Your colleague Liz Kendall says what matters is what works. It doesn't matter who provides it, it's whether it works. Better outcomes for patients. My, and he disagrees my, with her. My view is that if you look around the world, market-based healthcare systems cost more, not less, than national systems like the NHS. And I believe the evidence is clear that they add complexity, uh, they add cost. And also they deliver fragmentation of care when the future demands integration of care. I make no apology for it. I believe, Cathy, in the okay. public NHS, why a service okay, that puts people before okay, profit. Okay, we're running so short of time, so let me just put David Lloyd, you're a waste? GP and a staunch Labour supporter. Yeah. But I believe you think the private sector role, you're happy for it to be increased, is yes, that right? I think that's absolutely right. I think we must look for the best providers and the best commissioners. The, commission, the NHS are, are very good at commissioning, perhaps, but what we really need is good providers and it really doesn't matter who provides them That's we need the very right, best yeah. that we've got and the, and Kathy, the, the extraordinary thing was right. Kathy that very at last briefly, election please. at last election Andy actually offered patients okay. the choice of okay. any provider yeah. quick response yeah. Jeremy yeah. Yeah. Here, here, quick is, response, here is the danger and the privatization thing and it goes back to the poll that Victoria showed us the, for the public it's not about public versus private it's about good care exactly. versus poor care no, and the danger, the, of this NHL, the danger of this debate we were having this debate when your party was in power Andy and the Very fact briefly, is please. that we didn't notice mid-staffs was happening for long years. Terrible okay. care. That's what we need to be looking out for. That's what Jeremy has I'm, I'm afraid we've got to end it there. I have a feeling the debate could go on all night, <laughs> yeah. but that's all we've got time for tonight. Back to you, John, in the studio.